great morning, world. Welcome to the Rise Up with Dragon podcast with your host, Dragon. Get into the float state with Calm Mind Meditations and Gear. Great morning, world. I hope you're having an abnormal day because normal sucks. Um, it's your boy Dragon coming to you, and this is another edition of the Rise Up with Dragon podcast. Um, we stream this live twice a week. And we also have our recorded and edited to remove any of the mistakes that we make podcast, which you can find on all the channels at Rise Up With Dragon. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Um, what an interesting, you know, time, time stamp 2021. What an interesting time to be going through this holiday season. Um, I think it's pretty apparent that, you know, a lot of people have had, a, had some tough times. You know, it's, it's, we, we always talk about how one of the things that we always want to discuss is how to change the way we look at things so that things we look at change. And one of the things we always try to do is say, how did things happen for me rather than to me? It's been pretty tough to do that. Um, a lot of things have been going on um, in my life and, and in yours. And um, it's been more of a challenge, but challenges are exciting, you know? So for all of you that woke up this morning, um, struggling and had a little bit of trouble getting into structure. Um, I feel you, I feel you, but I just want you to know that um, whether you're looking at this as a good day or a bad day, or you're reflecting on the year as a good year or a bad year, they are both self-created. They are both fantasies that you created. So once you embrace that, by using things like the interface response system, which we talk about, um, you start to realize that you actually do have control over the way you look at things. Um, so if you don't like the way things look, change them, change them. But at the same time, know that once you change them and they start looking better, that's a fantasy as well. So choose your fantasy. So great morning, everyone. Excited to be with you today. Um, it is the eve of Christmas. It's the 24th. Um, here in Connecticut, it snowed a little bit. That was nice to wake up to. Um, excited for my daughter to finally get here and experience snow for the first time. She's from South Africa. So I want to jump right into this. Uh, I'm excited about this episode and, and excited about this day, excited about life, um, just because one of the biggest challenges that I've identified in learning how to better interface with the happenings uh, that that you know we can't avoid um, is just to uh, change your perspective about stupidity whether it's yours or somebody else's um, and also recognize the power that stupid people moronic people assholes <laughs> perhaps remember it might be you um, have on you and others so a couple of little things uh, you know when I, when I wake up in the morning and I start to journal um, that's where what gives rise to the rise up. By the way, I, this stuff is coming from some of this stuff is right out of the book. Um, but one of the things that I, I made a distinction about why I started to create the interface response system, why I started to devote my life to learning how to create a more efficient, effective response system. Um, and it was just because I was going through some tough times, like you might be in, you know, family stuff, you know, money stuff, divorce stuff and all that stuff. And I wasn't succeeding. I was losing that battle. So I made a conscious decision that I needed to take control of my life. And that's where all this stuff happened. So today I call this the stupidity vaccine. And uh, what a what a powerful word these days, vaccine. So if you came here thinking that I was going to tell you my opinion about vaccination, you are disturbingly wrong because my opinion is not something that you'll find often on the on the show um i'm here to uh draw analogies and uh, make you think about stuff so you can remove the blindfolds from yourself and uh, gain further access into just the idea of being conscious which i think is a great goal for everybody to set be abnormal in 2022 and be conscious um, next week, for those of you that listen to this episode live, I will be doing a special addiction, addition. Um, the whole theme of the week will be goal setting versus goal getting. 
So if you want to really, really lock into and solidify your goals, tune in. Um, so a couple of quotes that I found, um, this one from unknown, it says the idiot hunts in a pack and thinks in a herd fashion. Think about that. Think about anybody that you know, that's an idiot and you'll probably identify that they're hunting in a pack. They're kind of running with the herd. Right. And that's probably why it bothers you. Um, another thing, when you, whenever you identify an idiot, there's probably some idiot in you that you see in them. And that's why they piss you off. Um, here's another one. This one's by Buddha. I put this on my Instagram, Rise Up a Dragon today. This is so powerful. And I, I think this is a great place to start off when you set your goals for 2022. This is what Buddha says. He says, the trouble is that you think that you have time. I just wanted to share that with you. Think about that for a second. The trouble is that you think that you have time. Everything about the things that you want in your life that you don't have have fallen prey to this misconception that you that you have time to do that stuff. So let's get into the stupidity vaccine. I think you're going to enjoy this um, and struggle at the same time. So I'm reading this just killer book, one of the best books I've read in a while, um, The Psychology of Stupidity. If you're watching it on the video or YouTube, you can see it. Um, and, and it says it was edited by Jean-Francois Marmion. That's my French accent coming out. Um, but what's cool about it is it's a book about stupidity, but it also says right there, explained by some of the world's smartest people. What an interesting contrast between stupid and smart, and it'll come out in this uh, rise up. So I'm reading this book, um, and you know, basically it's, it's a book written by him, but it's also a compilation of interviews with some of the smartest people in the world, which is fascinating, you know. Um, one of them, Daniel Kahneman, um, who wrote Thinking Fast and Slow, which is one of the best books I've ever read. And that made it into my book as well. So I can say, like I said you know, before, it's one of the most enjoyable reads that I've ever consumed in years. And Dragon reads about a book a week. So that's a pretty big statement. So go get this book. In it, they unveil um, the unconscious character. This is my stuff. The unconscious character of the stupid asshole the unconscious character of the stupid asshole that we all frequently come across and interface with daily. The unconscious character of the stupid asshole. Isn't that interesting? The next time you run into a stupid asshole, um, just acknowledge that they might not know it, right? The unconscious character. Sometimes we interface with this person, this unconscious asshole, right? Sometimes we interface with this person in the mirror, I must add. And that's an important distinction to make. So one distinction that I grabbed while I was reading this that prompted one of the things that prompted this rise up today um, was the observation that stupid people, and here's where I got the name, stupid people are immunized, inoculated, vaccinated from the self-awareness that they are stupid. So think about what that means. Somehow stupid people don't know that they're stupid. Sometimes they recognize they're stupid, but when they're being stupid, they don't know they're being stupid. They actually think they're being smart and cool. So if you want to practice empathy, that's an important distinction. They don't know that they are just that stupid. <clears throat> so just like getting fat, lazy, and picking up smoking, right? We know those things are bad for us, but I don't think anybody, and you know, I work with my wife, we work very, very big in in, um, in health transformation. So we speak to people all, all the time. I've never met anybody that woke up and set an intention and goal to completely fuck up their lives. Like, do you know anybody that is right now getting ready for the January, you know, New Year's resolution and saying, I'm going to completely fuck up. I'm going to, I'm going to get overweight, lazy, sick, tired, and depressed. Nobody sets those goals. They do things that facilitate those things, but they never set those goals. So it's an unconscious thing, just like stupidity. So this idea of being vaccinated or immunized by one's stupidity, by your own stupidity, it's like somebody put an injection into you and it eradicated your ability to be self-aware of your stupidity. Um, it's a mandate um, is a mandate should you want to be successful, a successful stupid idiot. So here's what that means. If you want to be a successful stupid idiot, you have to figure a way out of not knowing that you are. Because if you knew that you were, you wouldn't do it. Unless you were just being silly. That's different. Silly and stupidity are different. 
You can be stupid while you're being silly, but that's an intentional thing. So if you want to be a stupid idiot, a fool, a moron, you have to figure out how to be vaccinated or inoculated from knowing that you are, or else you won't, you won't be successful at it. So that's really fascinating, um, or what's really fascinating is consider the other side and how we, remember there's two sides to stu stupidity. There's the, st the stupid idiot that's being stupid, but then it's the receiving end of others that are around that stupid idiot. So the other side um, of how we hypothetically non-stupid people, hypothetically non-stupid people react and respond to or interface, right? which is my system to stupid people. So let's look at this in this rise up and make sense of it from the dragon's layer and apply the interface response system to stupidity. So think for a moment how you, you how your stress response system, your automatic uh, system one, as Daniel Kahneman would say, your automatic stress response system, your knee jerk reaction and automated program responds to an interface experience and exposure with a fucking idiot. <laughs> so think about that. When you run into a fucking idiot, um, what's your knee jerk reaction? What's your programmed response? How do you feel when you are sucked into the vortex of an idiot? You probably feel confused, frustrated, angry, resentful that your time is being sucked out of your life, right? So the list goes on how you feel, but you feel me. So now the next question is, why do you feel that way? Why is it that you feel those things? Because remember, I've said this many, many times. When you're feeling feelings like that, you're typically feeling things that are in connection or correlation with things that are totally, totally, totally out of your control. So a stupid idiot walking up to you, that's out of your control. The only thing you control is not listening to them and walking away. So if you get frustrated, it might have something to do with like, oh man, how did I allow this stupidity to, to happen? So how, why do you feel that way? Is it because the individual is legitimately stupid? Well, stupidity is only something that exists in the eyes of the perceiver. Is it that they're actually stupid? Maybe. People could be stupid, right? Including us. But do they, do they know that they're stupid? That's where, that's where the interface response system takes place is the first step is always to create a different perception or entertain a different perception. It's very hard, right? We will always want to lash out and just stomp out a stupid person unless it's us. Um, but the first step is to create a different perception. And, and it begins by you asking a hmm question. Do they know that they're being stupid? Then how can their stupidity exist in the absence of their perception of it. So there's the vaccination. If somebody doesn't know that they're stupid, are they stupid? Well, yes, but unbeknownst to them, right? So such a perception stems from a place where the perceiver, you, the person that's saying, I see a stupid person, where the perceiver thinks, this is powerful. When you see and you label and give value that somebody is stupid, you are perceiving that you are a superior being to that person or not stupid. How can you blame somebody for being stupid if you are stupid too? So you have to also consider the fact that you in that moment think that you are superior to that person. This is going to suck for a lot of you. It sucked for me. So is stupidity an unconscious behavior? So I think it is yes, like I said, unless you're being silly. And that's fine. That's fun. So the only person in the room that is not stupid is the person that knows that most likely they are stupid. That's a conscious move. So stupidity, this is fun. This is a quote by uh, Jean-Francois Daltier. Stupidity is measured from a fixed point established by a person who considers himself superior. So think about that. Stupidity is actually something that is measured from a fixed point established by a person who is considering themselves superior. So think about that for a sec. If everyone was inherently stupid, just like success and failure, if everyone was a failure, failure wouldn't be a big deal. It would be the norm. If everybody was a success and failure didn't exist, success would probably be very boring which is interesting about what I'm seeing with cryptocurrency. It's like 
you're seeing so many people just like win from NFTs. Like pe people are becoming billionaires and becoming a billionaire is not that sexy anymore because it could happen overnight. So if everybody was inherently stupid, then nobody would notice anyone's stupidity and therefore stupidity would not exist. If nobody noticed stupidity, that it wouldn't exist. Now, why am I going through this crazy labyrinth of breaking down stupidity? It's because I want to help you stay on track in 2022 when the stupid idiots come, the flow burglars, the people that drive you crazy because they're out of your control. Um, if you can create a different perception of them, you'll react differently to them and you'll stay on course. And that's all you need to do to succeed in 2022. I'm going to go over goal setting versus goal getting, but all you really need to do is not stop. And the only reason that you'll stop sometimes is that stupid shit happens, right? And then also there's that mistake that you're making that you have more time. So here's another one. Luck is the spin. Listen to this. Luck is the spin that idiots put on probability. Luck is the spin that idiots put on probability. So there's a stupid thing to do, to look at probability and see it unfold and think that you got lucky. So there's a characteristic of a stupid idiot. So as they say, the harder, you've heard this one before, as they say, the harder and more consistent I work, the luckier I get. So there's the lucky thing. So it's only the bumbling fool that believes in luck. So I'm capturing some of these things from the book and putting them into my, my own thought process. It's the only the bumbling fool that believes in luck and perceives it as a valuable strategy in life. Do you know that we set that as a strategy sometimes to get lucky? So just like in a casino, the odds in life are predictable. There's a predictable outcome when you go into a casino and there's a predictable outcome when you're going through life but you also have to acknowledge that the predictable outcome is also attached to how you're approaching life. If you're all in, you're half in, or you're not in at all, it's predictable, the odds. So the odds, however, favor he who takes control of life by focusing him on consistent supportive action. So both scenarios are equally probable. So what I just unveiled there, and that's in the realm of control, is that we're in a lot more control of our outcome. If we set a goal and it's sexy and it has value and we do things every day with consistency to support that goal. Um, very, very cool to realize you're in control, but why would you not take advantage of that? Well, some stupid shit might happen and you might get off track or you might think that you deserve a break today at the, uh, the burger place, right? So there's a peculiar nature of stupidity. Now, this is fun. This is another quote coming up, but there's a peculiar nature of stupidity. So one of my favorite quotes of all time, and you know this one, that I live by and I've built into the interface response system um, to help process things and actions of other people is this, forgive them for they know not what they do. So whenever I say that, whenever I think that, forgive them for they know not what they do, I'm practicing acknowledging that most commonly people people might know what they do see some people fight me on this some people say you know what they're a fucking idiot and i and they know they're an idiot and they intentionally wanted to hurt me say okay so let's just hypothetically say that you're right about that do they understand the ramifications do they have the ability to understand how it impacts you and feel no so forgive them for they know not what they do on all or some levels so now this is easier said than done for people that are still hell bent on justifying their position. That's what you're doing when you, when you argue that you're justifying your position and I understand it, but it's justifiable, justifying your position. And in essence, being right, big, big challenges when people are struggling to win the I'm right conversation, biggest move that ever, ever happened in my life. And I give credit to the great Larry Markson for that is when he asked me, what's more important to you, dragon, to be right or kind. So it takes practice and then more practice, but that's what my system is for. That's what my interface response system is for. 
Um, it's it's to 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 learn how to perceive and and receive and and challenge yourself in in many many ways. So practicing these things is what my system's about. But the true value in awakening to empathetically acknowledging the potential that the things people think. So this is the awakening. Is the potential, the consideration that the things that people think, say, and do piss you off? Those things are often done completely unconsciously. I know you don't want to admit that because when somebody does some stupid shit to you, you just want to believe that they did it on purpose so you can get all mad and reared up. But what you don't know in that situation is two things. There's a chance they didn't know. And also while you're getting all fired up and, and justifying and protecting your position, you've gotten off track again you've gotten off track. So if you hate stupid people and stupid shit, then you want to work at this even more so that you don't allow that stupid stuff to get it, get you off track. So Descartes loved the Descartes quotes. So Descartes had made a great distinction on this, this a great time ago. He said this, he said the peculiar nature of error. So stupidity can be in error, right? mistakes. The peculiar nature of error is that it does not recognize itself. Wow. Think about that. Error, when an error is made, it doesn't recognize itself. Sometimes it does after, right? People sometimes, you know, ready, aim, fire, you know, sometimes they fire before they do the, the, the other stuff, but then they recognize it after. But that's an interesting designation and that helps you say, forgive them for, for they know not what they do. So this, you know, think about that for a second. It, it's as if, you know, he, this is Descartes, had some sort of creative rights to the Bible itself, you know? I see a lot of that stuff come out. So this was another stimulator when I, when I read that in uh, today's Rise Up as it helps me make the important distinction that in turn helps me forgive and forget stupidity in others. I see that as the biggest challenge. Um, it comes up in, in conversations with even chicken in my family. Sometimes it bothers people that I forgive so easily. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can stay on track and, and live my life around what matters most. Um, there's an actual value to it, but there's also the consideration that, that, you know, people might, it's, I use the word might, you'll feel better about it, might not know what the hell they're doing. So what's fun about the distinction is this, when you perceive a stupid moron, this is fun. When you perceive and you're, you're interfacing and perceiving saying, Hey, I got a, I got a stupid moron here. When you perceive a stupid moron, say something while sitting, like here's an analogy while sitting at a bar. Um, watching the news, like let's let's say they say something like, "Oh, they're all morons," right? And you're seeing them watch some sort of news thing. Um, they're all morons. You can be sure that indeed there is a moron within within close proximity when something like that happens. Meaning, if you're watching this, you're probably thinking this person's a moron, especially if they go against your core values. So most probably it's that person. However, Here's the interesting part, and this is where the interface response system comes into play, thus keeping you on track. However, this again would only be your opinion of that moronic thing. It would only be your opinion and perhaps the opinion of maybe even another onlooker that watched and perceived this, that, you know, and you might connect eyes with that person and get a smirk across the room and both kind of like confirm, yeah, he's a fucking idiot. So inherently you're, you're looking at each other saying, right. So the guy at the bar doesn't know that that's going on and he doesn't know that he's being an, a stupid moron. Isn't that interesting? It's only happening between you, your perception and the person across the room. So, but to you, he's a moron, but I mean, to him, or even maybe his moronic friend sitting next to him, who's agreeing with the comment that he made saying, yeah, right. Maybe you're looking and saying those two are morons, but those two don't think that they're morons. They actually think they're, they're right on point. So it's just you. So the far superior, smarter being that determines his moronic status is you. So you're far superior. You're looking at this person and saying he's a moron, but, but acknowledging the fact that you're only considering that because you think that you're not. That's interesting. 
So let's go a little further with that. So now in this scenario, you know, are you in this scenario a stupid moron? Well, you don't think so, but you might, right? You might be. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. So nope, according to you, you're not a stupid moron, but that would be your opinion. So perhaps also the opinion of your allied connection across the room, who's like saying, yeah, that guy's a moron. He doesn't think you're a moron. See how it's reversed right there. But then all of a sudden, if you pay attention, you might catch the catch across the room. You might see someone else looking at you from across the bar, the other side, and then all of a sudden catch them expressing something on their face that shows that they actually think that you're a stupid idiot. Here's what it would look like if you're watching the video. They would go like that, hearing you or watching you make fun of the other morons. So my point is, is that it's really, really powerful to recognize that moronic behavior, stupidity is something that is only a perception and it doesn't get created unless somebody determines it that's perceiving. Just recognize that you might be the be, you might be being perceived by somebody else. And that's powerful, you know, because then that removes you from that superior being complex. Or perhaps they saw, you know, somebody saw the way you parked your car crooked outside, who knows, and they looked at you and said, yeah, there's that friggin' idiot that parked outside. Meanwhile, you're thinking somebody else is stupid. So, but not you, you don't know that. So the peculiar nature of being a moron is that you don't know you are until somebody else tells you tells you are. And then when they tell you you are, you either fight it and justify your position or you go through some of this stuff that I'm teaching you and you recognize, hey, you know, maybe maybe I am a moron, but maybe they don't know what they're talking about. So the fact is, and as Forrest Gump says, he says stupid is what stupid does. But stupid is what the observer thinks. I'd encourage everybody in closing if you want to, if you want any of my potentially stupid advice, I encourage everybody, um, I encourage you to work on your judgment and your perceptions, which is the first phase of the interface response system, the judgment and perceptions of stupidity, and just let them go, let them go. Cause they might not be valid and they might not be serving you also acknowledge, are they serving you? Let them go. Um, and then worry about your own stupid shit in this next year. So Love and appreciate you. Love the feedback that I'm getting. Um, getting, I, I got a voicemail today that said that somebody is using my my morning podcast and thoughts to, you know, handle some heavy stuff in life. And of course, that makes me feel good about myself. But you know, it's just super, super cool um, to be involved in my own personal growth journey. I've been doing this for over ten years now, and uh, it's become a thing. But when I get feedback from you guys that this makes sense and it's a value and it's helping you kind of learn how to interface and react and respond more efficiently and stay on track in life, man, I love that. So always appreciate your feedback. Please share this. You can find me, follow me on Instagram at Rise Up With Dragon. Um, all the podcast channels, Rise Up With Dragon. Uh, sign up for our newsletter, The Dragon's Lair. I, I drop some heavy stuff in there and keep you posted on all things uh, dragon that are coming. And remember, this podcast and all my podcasts are sponsored by Karma Mind. Get into the float state with Karma Mind Meditations and Gear. That's the chicken's brand, and I just love it. Um, and I love and appreciate you all. And I'll see you. Have, Merry Christmas for those of you watching live. And I'll see you next week. And we will do some goal setting and goal getting, which is a big difference. Love and appreciate you. Have an amazing day. 